Hello, everybody. My name is Elijah Ignatieff, and if you don't know me, I have a, another character called Captain Sweep that if you Google and you want to have a good laugh, perhaps, you can check out what Captain Sweep is doing. I've had this character, a pirate wizard, be the sort of personification of my shadow. It seems that the one of the deepest lessons for all human beings is to come to grips with our own shadow, come to grips with our own negativity, come to grips with the parts of ourselves that we do not want to acknowledge, see, or deal with. And so it gets submerged, but comes out in ways that we don't seem to be able to control. And it seems to me the whole spiritual journey here is to look at this shadow, to heal this shadow, to accept this shadow, and to step into what are called gifts and siddhis within a uh, knowledge stream called Gene Keys by Richard Rudd that shows that we have these shadow elements, gift elements, and siddhi elements, which is like super gift, and they're all connected together. And they're like levels and you have to go through a process of transformation in order to access these higher parts of our DNA. And so behind everything that we're going through right now, each of us has a unique configuration of these gene keys. And we're all going through a process of transformation, whether we know it or not. And what the gene keys do is they give a map for understanding what we're going through in a manner completely different from everything else out there. And of all the different systems I've studied and seen, it has a genius that is uh, beautiful. And since I'm a systems designer myself, I'm very interested in conceptual designs of other people's ideas. If you have a body of work, if you've been working on a knowledge field for a long period of time, you tend to look at the world in a very different way than other people because you have your own internal reference point. You stop having to go outside to external authorities and you design and create your own. And then this internal reference point becomes the way that you give meaning to the world, that you give significance to the world. And at the core of whatever that's gonna be is gonna be your value system. And so right now, if you could write down on a piece of paper, your value system. If you can't, it's unconscious within you. You may or may not have consciously chosen these values and you may or may not know how these values affect your behavior, affect how you think, affect how you communicate, affect why you feel a certain way when someone says something. And so a human being has a direct relationship between their values and their DNA. And I have this sense that part of spiritual evolution is us consciously choosing conscious value systems that then get programmed into our DNA. And that is how we affect our actual evolution or progression as a species or as an individual. And this is the deeper question that we're all facing right now. How do we evolve? How do we get past what we're going through? Because we're definitely going through a species level transformation because of the internet, the computer, uh, AI, the blockchain, all of these factors coming together to fundamentally transform how we are as a species. And we're in the middle of this right now. 
And then you have all these different worldviews with all their different shenanigans about how they're trying to control the minds of the masses, trying to grab the resources and trying to get what is theirs in a sense. And this is at the higher levels of smaller groups and uh, coalitions of families that have been here for generations. And they manipulate the media, which they actually own and control into having a certain way of thinking, a certain way of seeing the world for the people who have sort of grown up in these uh, school systems, which are actually indoctrination processes. And this is something which is generally not wanted to be known by those who are doing it. This calendar, which has been uh, brought to the world by Carl Kalaman, uh, is a way for us to look at the evolution of consciousness. And here we have nine levels, the cellular cycle, mammalian cycle, familial cycle, tribal cycle, cultural cycle, national cycle, planetary cycle, galactic cycle, and universal cycle. And as you can see, it's a growing boundary around what is encompassed within the consciousness of us, but also growing around us. So like, what are our minds? What is consciousness? How do we actually think? Where do ideas come from? These are very deep philosophical questions that have been tried to be answered over all the, the years we've been around. And what this does is it changes the game completely on science, on philosophy, on spirituality, because it gives a roadmap that shows the evolution of consciousness, which is at the base of our sort of mind and how we perceive reality. And so the world right now is, is in these cycles. Each one of these is a cycle with a different type of you know, wavelength. And right now, these last two cycles are starting to come into our awareness in such a degree that it's creating the reverberations that are gonna break up all the patterns that have been coming from before, especially this planetary power one. And when you know that, like we're in a low, we're in a very negative place within these cycles right now. And it's showing this descent, but with this descent comes a rise back up into something, let's say more positive, but it's like evolution is, is occurring through us. And if we don't take that into account, if we don't acknowledge that, if we don't know that, the insanity that we see around us doesn't make sense. And we're, we go into fear and we, we go into these patterns which are being orchestrated for us to play within. Now, if you want to evolve spiritually, it's rising above. It's accessing different frequencies. It's not getting pulled into the fear. It's being pulled into the love. But how do you do that when you're surrounded by insanity of all the people that are filled with fear? In all my research and in all my map making, which is the main thing that I, I love to do, is make conceptual maps. I, I came across something called the five communication spaces. And of all the maps that I've done, this is the one that is like the beginning. This is the one that organizes everything else. And at different times, I put different maps in that position. And whatever map that you place as your main organizing map is, is like the key to how you think. It's the key to how you see the world. And for many people, they don't even know what map they use. They don't even know what maps are controlling how they organize information, knowledge, and, and data in their minds or the outside world. And this map is the beginning of something which I've called the inflow matrix. It's an operating system. It's a whole series of maps that when you put them together, you have a whole thinking system that can organize any business, that can organize any job, that can organize any community, 
and then connect them together into a conceptual network to do business through. Seem like a good idea? I think so. Would you like to know what that map is? I would hope so. But I find people aren't that interested in maps. And if they're not that interested in maps, I don't seem to be that interested in them. Not that you would care. But if you're watching this now, you're probably wondering what point I'm getting to. So the map would be one of them. But before I do, I would like to give a bit of context into what we're getting into here. Because this is a video I'm going to send to all of my Facebook friends and send to everyone that I've known. Because this is the beginning of me showing or teaching what I've learned over the last 25 years. And Planetary Guardians is the large umbrella. It's the foundation. It is the international media game that creates web TV shows focused on every issue that we need to solve. Right now, there's no holistic network of media that's for the people, by the people, that is focused on actually dealing with all of these problems and issues that we all have to solve. We're scattered. And we're always looking to the corporations or the governments to do anything that is actually very organized. The people just sit there and wonder, how did this come to be? So a planetary guardian is someone who has left the thinking of most human beings and is entering into a multi-dimensional world that is actually where the future of our species is going to go. They're the ones who are ahead of the game and they are organizing together 144,000 of them to put together the pieces of what our species needs to survive into the next thousand years. And if we don't do that, we're either going to be in some Orwellian insane state that seems to be projected into our collective insanity right now. So this has something very unique in it. This has something which I'm going to say has never been done before and is not being done on the planet right now in this manner. There's nothing like this. And so it's new and you got to come with a very humble heart and you have to come with beginner's mind and you have to come with the idea that whatever is going to occur, it's not going to be easy. And I have to sort of act as a teacher or facilitator long enough for you and everybody else to get this going because I'm like a catalyst, but I don't think that I, I can participate in it. It's like when there's a leader and then the leader has their faults, the whole thing screws up usually because of the leader's faults. And I have many faults and I don't want to be in a position of being the leader because the leader usually gets taken out and uh, there's this sort of weird thing in at least in Canada where leaders don't necessarily get supported um, and so to me a leader is someone who's putting something forward that no one else has done before and so they're leading the way and they have to find a way to share what they've discovered with enough people because it's an organized thinking system it's a way of organizing your mind so that everyone has the same internal reference point conceptually for how you are doing your business, how you are running the system, how it works. Right now, every different corporation, every government, everything has a different operating system. They use different languages, they use different maps, they use different info texts, they use different everything. So there's no common reference point. It's always different. So what we're looking here at is an operating system called the inflow matrix operating system which is a series of maps 
which creates a structure which then can be custom designed to any business context. So it's a universal thinking system, but within it, there's a way to custom design a value system. Going back to what I was talking about earlier. So it's actually combining our spiritual evolutionary needs with our business needs. And this is something which hasn't happened because there's always been this divide between business and spirituality. And I'm not using the word religion. I want to move out of the different worldviews and come to a unit of place called sacred space, which is something we can all share, all worldviews can come into, and we're not going to fight over it. We're going to unite over it. Because if you're coming in with your different beliefs, you're always going to argue about what are the differences in those beliefs. But if you come together with a uniting philosophy where you're actually wanting to find the middle ground, you're wanting to find something we can all agree to. Because if we can't agree to it, there's got to be something probably wrong with it. But there's certain things that we can all agree to. And that's what we have to find together. And when you're dealing with all of these different issues that we're facing, there has to be a sort of cohesive, united, intelligent methodology for addressing all of these issues. And so what I'm putting forth here with this inflow matrix operating system is that it's a sort of a, a different type of AI where it's where the humans are the nodes and we're using the infotech and the language structure to connect us and to find a collective intelligence that is actually good for everybody. So it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take some effort, but I believe that I have some tools for you called the New Paradigm Toolkit, which are um, maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software. And I believe that these are going to be the way that we can train ourselves to find out how to create something called a shared knowledge community, which is a new paradigm organizational structure, which is the new cell in the new paradigm as the corporation is the cell to the old paradigm of thinking. And so we're going deep. We're not just doing surface here. We're going to the roots of the foundation of our languaging and we're building something new that will format, reformat our minds, not just our singular mind, but our collective mind, so that we can all work together in a manner that has transparency, in a manner, let's say, that can be built on the blockchain, that has a reality that is true. Because what's happening right now is all of the lies, all of the illusions, all of the insane banking practices of all the past hundreds of years are, are just there to be seen. And they're there to be seen for the insanity that they have. And we have to build something new. And we have to be the people that build it, not those that are creating the problems, right? So how do we do this? It's going to take some time and it's going to take perseverance from people that are dedicated to learning a new way of thinking. And I have to admit that from my point of view, it's going to take, I don't know what, I really don't. It's going to take a curiosity from all of us. This map is the starting place. This map is the beginning. And if you look, you have personal space, one-to-one -one space, group space, community space, and sacred space. Five spaces, five dimensional thinking. All of these exist all the time and all of these exist together. You can go inside of any of these and find any of these. But what you go into first creates the primary. What you go into first creates the real boundary. So when you go into the personal space, 
That's just you, nobody else. That's at the essence of your own autonomy and sovereignty is that you have your own personal space that you have jurisdiction over, that you are a sovereign being of. You get the choice as to what happens inside there. As soon as you start interacting with somebody else, one person, you go into a one-on-one space. And this one-on-one space is unique between you and that person. It's usually found in the group space and the community space, but it can on its own be one of the most beautiful things between human beings. That's how we connect. We connect at a deep level with one other. It's a lot harder to connect with people in these two other spaces. So as soon as you add a third person, everything changes. The context changes. You can't think that the way you talk to the person here is going to be the same with the third person or fourth or fifth. So group spaces is like a meta space, right? Like all of these are meta spaces. They are the spaces that organize all the interactions inside of them. So when you look at your group space, you can look at your family, you can look at your school, you can look at your job, you can look at your friends, you can look at all the other contacts that you interact with people. And you can just still see this is group space thinking, group space, group space. And the big distinction is with community space. And this is something that's kind of missing from our interactions. I think we're always in group space. There's always some hidden jurisdiction by some group, wherever you are, to find the commons these days, to find the true community commons, very difficult. And we don't know it. That's part of the deeper brainwashing. We don't know what we've lost. And so what this map does is it's creating the true community space. Is creating a way of thinking, a way of being that is distinctly different from the group space. And that's part of this whole evolution in our species. We have these systems at the national level, provincial level, state level, then we get down to the community level where the real people are. The people exist in the community. All the other levels of, of governance control are abstractions put together by group spaces. And that's something to really come to grips with because when we look at ourselves as sovereign beings and who and what we are, we have to free ourselves from the jurisdiction of group spaces that have taken over the community space. This is massive to get because First, we have to understand the philosophy of whatever it is we want to build. And that philosophy has to be something that we can all agree to. And this map introduces the final place, the sacred space at the center point, which can acknowledge the creator, can acknowledge Allah, can acknowledge Jesus, can acknowledge Kuan Yin, can acknowledge all of the different religious beliefs, understandings, and just point to a place where it's sacred to us all, that we acknowledge something more, that we can bring in ritual, we can bring in ceremony, we can bring in whatever we want, but we're just creating a sort of a neutral center point where we're actually acknowledging the sacred within our lives. And if we look at the world and why it's being treated so badly, it's because we've lost that sacredness. There's something within every human being that has a direct connection to everything that there is around us. And it can be shut down. It can be shut down by materialism. It can be shut down by putting our attention and our desires upon things that actually don't have a true substance. And it takes our attention and intention away from the sacred. And so to me, we need to bring that back in, but bring that back in in a way that isn't beating people over the head with, you know, this is important, you have to do it. But it's, it's again, by a choice from all, because this map can work within any worldview. 
And the idea is to actually bring some conceptual maps together like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and have it as a focus point for how we all make sense of the world. And so this is part of the transformation. And this map then has a place for goals and values. This map can be programmed with one year goals and a value that you can use to program the space. Now, this is at the heart of the inflow matrix. This is at the heart of, I guess, what I've discovered, that you can program spaces with values and that this is one of the most beautiful skills that a human can have. So what is all this about? I'm looking for 12 facilitators that want to go through a whole year cycle and maybe even a second one to look at building something called a shared knowledge community where each of you would be facilitating a team of 12 people uh, to achieve certain goals over a period of, again, long time. So we're in it for the long haul and we need people that are sort of pioneers in learning how to sort of use the tools of the new paradigm toolkit and uh, share the inflow matrix to build a shared knowledge community within a planetary guardians game. And this is all part of a very secret plan that Captain Sweep has. And the idea is to make it as fun as possible, to bring in as much media as possible, to bring in your quirkiness, to bring in uh, humor, to bring in making fun of actually trying to do something like this, because at some point it's going to get really funny because humans are funny and humans interacting, learning anything is funny. And because this is transformational, everyone is going to have to deal with their own shadow at some point, especially me. And I've got some major problems with group space. <laughs> I got to be honest, it drives me crazy. And so I have to transform. I have to change. I have to learn to love people in groups and to interact in a way that works for everybody. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm really wanting it to be fun. And so to have fun, you have to have certain elements and uh, those elements are going to be in the design for sure. So I'm sending this out to the people that I know, because some of you may have been tracking what I've been doing. And basically, I haven't started until now. Everything I've been doing has been research and development. Everything I've been doing has been on a dime. And I'm hoping that this can be done in such a manner that we all profit by it. It's supposed to be business, right? So there is going to be a charge. And... Um, at some point, you're going to be able to make money with it. It's a business system. And so this is, I guess, a bit of a sales video, looking to find 12 facilitators who want to go through a, a year or two year training program. And it's going to cost you. But at the end, you're going to have probably a career for the rest of your life with a new paradigm process that the whole world will be wanting to learn. So I think there's a lot in it for you. There's a lot in it for me. There's a lot in it for the world. And if you're interested, well, then contact me and we'll have a little chat, see who the first 12 people are going to be. Thanks for listening.